A team of astronomers has used an ultraviolet instrument on the Hubble Space Telescope to detect carbon in the atmosphere of a white dwarf star that's just 128 light years away from us. Early in my PhD studies, I was lucky enough to do some research on white dwarfs, so they've always held a special interest for me. Let's take a quick look at what a white dwarf is. A white dwarf is the final stage of the evolution of a star less than about eight times the mass of the sun, which isn't massive enough to create a supernova explosion. These stars will become red giants as they reach the end of their hydrogen fuel supplies, eventually puffing off their outer atmospheres and creating a stunning planetary nebula like this one. What's left of the star at the end of this process is a white dwarf, roughly the size of the Earth, containing up to 140% the mass of the sun. This will be the fate of our sun in about 5 billion years. White dwarfs are composed of carbon and oxygen, or oxygen and neon cores, and the ones that form from a single star usually have a blanket of hydrogen and helium above that, and when we observe a white dwarf, it's usually this hydrogen and helium blanket that we see, and we don't detect the carbon, oxygen, or neon that are lurking below. However, in the case where a white dwarf forms by a violent collision with another star, either a second white dwarf or a subgiant star, carbon and oxygen can sometimes be observed in the atmosphere of the star, presumably dredged up in the collision. So far, this has been very rare, with only six documented cases, but that's exactly what the team has found in its observations of WD0525 plus 526. This white dwarf appeared like any other white dwarf when viewed in visible light, although it is very massive at 120% the mass of the sun and unusually hot at 21,000 Kelvin. Once the team turned Hubble's ultraviolet cosmic origin spectrometer to the star, the picture changed dramatically, showing carbon in the atmosphere of the star and suggesting that WD0526 plus 526 was formed by a stellar merger rather than from a single massive star. This is the first time evidence for a merger has been discovered using ultraviolet spectroscopy, and it raises some really interesting questions. How many other white dwarf stars that have so far appeared to be formed from a single star will actually turn out to have evidence for a stellar merger when observed in ultraviolet light? Why is the abundance of carbon in the atmosphere of the star 100,000 times lower than that observed in the other six white dwarf stars known to have formed from mergers? The list goes on, and the team hopes to extend this research by observing more white dwarf stars in the ultraviolet to extend our understanding of white dwarf stars and white dwarf binary systems. As always, I have glossed over a lot of the details here, so check out the press release from ESA and also the paper that was published in Nature Astronomy. Links to both of those are in the description. That's today's video. Please like and subscribe. I will catch you in the next one.